This is the Gibson Chris Novoselic RD bass. And it's a surprisingly rare, very thick, very meaty sounding bass that has a lot of great aesthetic qualities to it, including just a lot of really fantastic feeling to it and just a nice sense of quality all around. So back in 2011, to celebrate 20 years of Nirvana's second album, Nevermind, Gibson came out with the Chris Novoselic RD bass. Uh, so Chris Novoselic is obviously the basis for mainly Nirvana. His tone and his playing are extremely unique and just something that's really awesome. Uh, I feel that in quite a few grunge bands, uh, a lot of the bass players will just usually stick with the rhythm as thick and heavy as that is. But with Chris Novoselic, it seems like he really tried to sort of break the mold with that and add in little melodies, little hiccups here and there between different riffs to really make them his own. So basically think of this bass as a modern interpretation of the RD without all the extra features of active electronics and all that. Very simple, very straightforward, passive, very thick, very mean sounding bass. So starting with the body, it's maple and it feels and sounds huge. This one is 11.8 pounds and you can really feel that. So for even more sustain on top of all this weight, you have a string through three point bridge. I mean, it's Gibson. I couldn't really expect anything different to be honest, but I'm so disappointed by three point bridges as it is. And this one's not really that different to be honest. It's just a chrome plated three point bridge. While not terrible, I just, I don't like three point bridges. If you've ever seen any of my other videos that include bases with these, I, I don't like them. They're just, they look cool, but that's about it. When it comes to adjusting them, it's an absolute pain, but I've had plenty of luck with this one, thankfully. For your pickups, you have a pair of Seymour Duncan STK J2s. So it's their hot stacks. These pickups together are really aggressive, very full, and just have a really nice punch to them. They're very bright on top of that too. So you have a nice, heavy, but bright sound. Then you have three knobs for volume for the neck, volume for the bridge, and an overall tone. Moving up, you have a set 20 fret maple neck and I absolutely love how this feels. Normally, I really don't like finishes on the back of necks just because that can prevent you from being able to move up and down the fretboard as fast as you can. And especially if you're sweaty or anything like that, it'll really stop you and really just make you stop and start. And that's really annoying, especially over time. But I found that with this bass, it feels very fluid and very natural. You have 20 frets and an Obesh fretboard. And from what I can really tell is that this material is just sort of a cheaper ebony pretty much, uh, but it feels really good, no snags or anything like that, and it looks really good too. Then moving on to the headstock, you have the classic Gibson style with a Corian nut and Grover tuners. And then in the middle, you have Chris's signature too. <laughs>
about these bases is I don't really have a whole lot of extra information about them. I know they started building them in 2011, but I, I really don't think they lasted that long after that, maybe two or three years. This one is stamped in the back as 2011, but uh, there's just not a lot for sale on the used market. I'm actually surprised I was able to snag this one. I've been looking for one for quite a while now, mainly because I love the RD style and I love that they had Seymour Duncans in them too. But if you're trying to buy one nowadays, it seems like they're going for way, way more than they're worth to be honest. Yes, this is a USA made Gibson. Yes, it's a limited model, but I'm pretty sure these are probably a thousand dollars new at least when they first launched, maybe. But if you're looking for one secondhand now, they're averaging about $1,500, $1,700, $1, which is just too much money, to be honest, because you can get an older RD for the same amount. But it just has to be because you don't see a lot of these at all. I mean, I was off and on looking for one for years until I found one on Music Go Round in Georgia and they had it shipped over to me. But just the fact that they're so expensive now, I don't really know if it's worth it unless you're just a collector or it's just something that you've truly wanted for so long. But overall, this is the sort of base that Gibson should be making today. A very simple, straightforward RD style base that feels, plays, and sounds just super thick, very heavy, and it's just in your face. I absolutely love it. And it's just a shame that they only made these for a few years, and it's a shame that Gibson doesn't make anything like this now. But if you're able to find one of these for cheaper, I highly suggest that you do because it's just a solid instrument through and through. But let me know what you guys thought about this bass. Thank y'all so much for watching as always. If you like this video and want to see any more like it, go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you want to be like these incredible people right here, head over to my Patreon page for extra perks. But thank y'all so much for watching as always, and I'll see y'all next time.